All right, today I'm gonna to show you how to replace just the glass on a Samsung Galaxy S5. This is one of the newer phones that just came out and everything on this phone is working perfectly except for that the glass is cracked. Now you have a couple options. One is just buy the glass, which is super cheap, but it is very difficult to replace. The second option is to buy the glass and the LCD combination. It's more expensive, but it is much, much easier to replace. I will link both of those parts in the video description below and you can choose what you want to do. I am using some playing cards, a screwdriver, and some tweezers to finish this repair. I'm going to pop off the back cover of the phone, and then underneath this little plastic piece right here, there's a little ribbon cable that we're going to disconnect. This ribbon cable goes to the home button on the Galaxy S5. I'm going to pull out the battery, pull out the SIM card, and I'm going to use a hot plate in order to heat my phone up to the right temperature in order to separate the screen from the rest of the body. I like to heat it up to about 97 degrees Celsius, which is about 206 degrees Fahrenheit. There are a couple different ways that you can heat up the phone. One is with a heat gun, so go ahead and click that top video if you want to watch how to remove the screen of the heat gun, or you can watch the three common mistakes that people make when removing just the glass. I would recommend watching both of those videos if you're serious about this repair. I'm going to use a knife to get started up in the top corner and then slip my playing card inside and this is just going to help separate the adhesive from the foam body itself. I'm not going to go too deep into the foam just yet because there are two important ribbon cables that are inside of there and if you go too far you're going to rip them so make sure to watch farther ahead in the video as well to see where those ribbon cables are and make sure you avoid them because if you do rip them you'll have no option but to buy the more expensive part. I'm leaving the cards in there as I slide them in so that the phone doesn't re-adhere to itself. Now that it's cooled down a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and put it back on the heater, the hot plate that I have. And once it's heated up for about a minute or two, I'm going to get back at it again. Once I have all the sides separated, I'm going to use my red pry tool and slide it into the phone to separate the uh, adhesive that's holding the LCD down to the back of the phone as well. The LCD to this phone is actually surprisingly resilient. It doesn't break very easily. I would be very careful though as you're sticking the pry tool down to not damage any of those ribbon cables. So this one right here is one I'm disconnecting for the LCD and that's where it connects to the main board. And then as you can see as I'm pulling up the screen from the phone, this little ribbon cable that goes to the home button is also pulling through that back hole. I'm going to heat up the screen again so I can pull off this last little bit. The only thing that's holding the screen onto the phone right now is the cables that are in charge of the back button and menu button. So I'm going to scrape those off the front glass with my knife and then kind of press them down into the phone so that they don't rip and they don't get in the way for later. Now for the menu button and then I can just twist the phone off of the adhesive and pull it off of the main body. This right here is the LCD and glass combination. If this is the part that you're going to buy, you can just go ahead and reattach that right now and clip it back into place. But if you're going to attempt to do just the glass repair, then I'll show you how to do that right now. As you can see from the heat and the prying up, we almost separated the LCD from the glass. You can see the glue kind of separate away. I'm going to go ahead and test the phone right now to make sure everything's still working. Looks like it all turns on and functions. Everything's working great, so I'm going to use my hot plate again, set the screen down on top of it, and let it warm up for a couple minutes. Remember that you can use a heat gun and a temperature sensor. I'll link these in the video description below, and those will accomplish the same thing that the hot plate does. Now that the screen is heated up to the right temperature, I'm going to use my playing cards again to separate the glass from the LCD. And you can see as I go in, the glue just kind of separates. You'll see it kind of streak down the edges of the LCD as you pull it away. Also keep in mind that there is a million things that can go wrong while you're doing this. So you do this at your own risk. And remember that you might need to buy the more expensive part anyway if something goes wrong and your LCD stops working. I'm going to put this screen up every time I reheat the phone just to remind you what temperature needs to be at. You can see that the glass shards on this phone will come away individually. They're not laminated like they were on the Galaxy S4. I kind of liked that about the S4. Because the screen is so thin, 
the window of opportunity that you have to pull off the glass is relatively small because the screen cools down so quickly. And when the screen cools down, the glue is not as liquid between the glass and the LCD and is much harder to separate. If your phone has less cracks in it, it will be easier to pull the glass away. This phone was pretty obliterated, so it makes it more difficult. Anyway, still continuing on with the removal of the glass. If you're getting bored of this whole process and watching me do it, you can go ahead to skip to around minute eight or nine, and that's when I start to re-adhere the new glass to the LCD using the UV light and the UV glue. So that's pretty interesting. Anyway, each time your phone cools down, you need to make sure to heat it up to the right temperature again. And a couple things to be aware of, if you overheat your phone, you're gonna discolor the LCD. Also, when you're pulling away the glass shards from the body of the phone, if you pull up one edge of the shard while the other shard is still you know, adhered to the LCD, it's gonna put a lot of pressure on the LCD and could possibly crack it. So you have to be super careful with that. Now, if you feel like you've learned anything or you just enjoyed watching this video, I would appreciate it if you subscribe to my YouTube channel. I do put up videos pretty much every week usually related to cell phone repair or automotive repair, you know, fixing something here and there. Jerry Rig everything. You can also follow me on Instagram at Zach's Jerry Rig. It would be fun to see you around. Also, while you're doing your own repair, if you think of any more hints or things that I left out of this video, make sure to leave them down in the comments below for other people. It's always good to have a group conglomeration of ideas when attempting a project this hard. Anyway, continuing onward with the cards, I'm just going to go around the edge of the LCD super slow, you know, slow and steady, make sure you don't break anything. I would say that this whole entire project took me about two hours, two and a half hours. If you're just planning on doing the LCD and glass swap, which is the more expensive part, I would say the process would take about, you know, 25 or 30 minutes. Removing the glass is a little more complicated and you know you want to take your time just so you don't have to you know spend the extra money on the whole part itself. Anyway, we're getting closer here. All the big shards are pretty much taken away. I'm gonna heat it up one more time. You have about a 30 second window just because the glass is so small and so thin, it doesn't retain heat very well, so it cools down very quickly. And that makes it harder when you're trying to keep the glue liquid so you can separate the glass from the rest of the phone. Anyway, now that there's just little shards left, I found that it was easier to go in a kind of sawing motion with my card. I would just run the edge of the card down along the pieces of glass and it would almost twist them out instead of lift them up, if that makes sense. You can kind of see me do it here in the video. For those of you in the future who are going to attempt this without a temperature sensor to tell you what temperature the phone is at, you're gonna to wanna to heat it up to the point that it's too hot to touch comfortably. You won't be able to rest your finger on it for more than maybe a second at a time. And then you'll know that the glue between the glass and the LCD is ready to be separated. Anyway, as you can see, the whole slicing motion with the card works pretty well to get the little shards off. I'm just going to town on those right now. I'm brushing the little bits away with my fingers as well to keep the screen as clean as possible. This last little bit went pretty quick. I have this whole process sped up right now to about 400%, so it's four times faster than how I normally did it. All right, now I'm gonna make sure I didn't break anything on the screen, pop the battery in, plug it in, and it looks like everything's still working, so I'm still good to go with just the glass repair. Now, if something wasn't working at this point, you have to buy the more expensive part and roll with that. Now right here, in order to get the rest of the glue off, I've found that the easiest way is to just kind of roll it off with my fingers. You can see that I'm just pressing up against it and just rubbing the glue off in little rolls as I go down. And this gets the big chunks of glue off that won't come off with the, the denatured alcohol that I use once the main chunks are gone. You can see me have a little rag right here and I'm just using the denatured alcohol to get rid of the rest of the residue off of the LCD. Pretty straightforward. Now I'm gonna put the home button back on just so I can use it to line up the glass as I position it on top of the LCD again. It makes it a little bit easier. This is the UV glue. Some people call it LOCA. It's the optical grade ultraviolet adhesive. 
I've linked it in the video description below so you can check that out and get it there. With the UV glue, it's a little bit easier with the Galaxy S5 than it is the S4 because the runoff glue just ends up on the paper towel below you. You want to put the glue on just like this so that when you place the glass on it, it'll run towards the edges. And you'll see why in just a second. Here's the glass. Once again, you can find these in the video description below. I'll link all the parts you need down there. And I'm going to go super slow with this. The slower you go, the less bubbles you'll have under your screen. I lined it up with the home button and I'm just starting very gently with the bottom edge of the screen and slowly lowering it down on the glue. You can see how the glue acts once the glass touches it. Put my pair of tweezers underneath the top of the glass and I'm still just going to lower it down. If you do it any quicker than this, bubbles can form in the glass and it's super difficult to get them out. You have to kind of push them and you have to kind of push them towards the edge of the screen. It gets a little bit annoying, so just go slow and steady, just like the rest of this repair. And now that the glass is fully dropped on the screen, I can take my finger and just press right there in the center of it, and that'll just make the glue run towards the edges. Kind of sweet how this works. Just press where you want, and the glue goes out. The nice part about this is that as I'm pressing it down, the glue is going to kind of suction the glass to the LCD. And this is super important because when I'm going to line the LCD up with the glass, I can just lift the whole contraption up off of the paper towel, flip it over, and make sure that the edges of the phone, as you can see the black line around the edge of the copper there, is equal on both ends. That's how you know the LCD is correctly positioned in the glass window. So you won't have any laps or gaps in the LCD when you're putting it back together. I'm going to flip it over one more time and make sure that it's completely lined up as well at the bottom. And you can see a little bit of glue seeped out the edges. This is totally normal and I'll show you what to do with that in a second. Okay, so here's the UV light. Once again, I'll put this in the video description below if you need to buy it. And you would use this for any type of repair in the future. The UV glue is a really great way to replace the glass on your screen. It's not even very expensive. Anyway, so I'm going to go ahead and just brush it over the top really quick, and this will kind of get it tacky underneath. The whole process only takes about you know a minute or two for the glue to completely cure. I'm just going to rest the light on top of the phone and let it sit there for a little bit. Now that that's done, I'm going to take a little rag and wipe away the excess glue along the edge of the phone, making sure to get both sides down around the button. And then I'm going to go over with the UV light one more time just to cure any glue that might have seeped out from around the edges. And this will make it so you don't have any excess glue inside of your phone, which is nice. Now I'm going to test it, make sure everything works. I'm going to clip that screen back in, put the battery in, and it looks like we're good to go. Everything is 100% functional, so the only thing we have to worry about now is making sure that the glass, well, the whole screen unit itself can be adhered back to the phone body. I'm going to clean out underneath the home button as well. Alright, so this is the double-sided sticky tape. I will link this in the video description below as well. And I'm going to, to just go to town on the inside of the phone and put the sticky tape everywhere. I would make sure to focus on the edges of the phone as well as the top, making sure not to cover anything important like the cameras or the home button. And right now I'm going to take the, the back button and the menu buttons, the stuff that you peeled off the front glass earlier, I'm just going to lay them in the little grooves that are already made for them. That way when I put on the front glass, I don't have to worry about it. I'm going to take off the paper from the double-sided sticky tape and prep the screen to be positioned back into place. Remember the little ribbon cable that goes through this back slot. Just kind of feed that through to start off with. Plug the screen in. Make sure that it's working. Everything's functioning well, so I can just take the screen and press it back into place, making sure that it's completely stuck down along the tops, the edges, and the bottom. I'm going to clip the ribbon cable down onto the main board underneath that little plastic bracket thing, and snap the back cover in place. And there you go. Whether you did just the glass repair or you did the more expensive part, which is the LCD and the glass, either way it is very impressive repair.
Thank you very much for watching my videos. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And don't forget to hit me up on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Thanks for watching.